Hi, friends. So when we left off, there had been the whole big scene on the football field. And um, George said, don't worry. We covered our tracks really well. There's no way we'll get busted. Chapter six, busted. The next day at school, an announcement came over the loudspeaker. George Beard and Harold Hutchins, please report to Principal Krupp's office at once. Uh-oh, said Harold. I don't like the sound of that. Don't worry, said George. They can't prove anything. George and Harold entered Principal Krupp's office and sat down on the chairs in front of his desk. The two boys had been in this office together countless times before, but this time was different. Mr. Krupp was smiling. As long as George and Harold had known Mr. Krupp, they had never, ever seen him smile. Mr. Krupp knew something. I didn't see you boys at the big game yesterday, said Mr. Krupp. Uh, no, said George. Uh, we weren't feeling well. Yeah, yeah, Harold stammered nervously. We, we, we went home. Oh, that's too bad, said Principal Krupp. You boys missed a good game. George and Harold quickly glanced at each other, gulped, and tried hard not to look guilty. Lucky for you, I have a videotape of the whole thing, Mr. Krupp said. He turned on the television in the corner and pressed the play button on the VCR. I don't know if you guys know what a VCR is, but it was sort of how we played movies before DVDs, before streaming, before Blu-ray. Not sort of, that's what it was. A black and white image appeared on the TV screen. It was an overhead shot of George and Harold sprinkling pepper into the cheerleaders' pom-poms. Next came a shot of George and Harold pouring liquid bubble bath into the marching band's instruments. How do you like the pregame show? Asked Mr. Krupp with a devilish grin. George eyed the television screen in terror. He couldn't answer. Harold's eyes were glued, Harold's eyes were glued to the floor. He couldn't look. The tape went on and on, revealing all of George and Harold's behind the scenes antics. By now, both boys were eyeing the floor, squirming nervously and dripping with wet. Mr. Krupp turned off the TV. You know, he said, ever since you boys came to the school, it's been one prank after another. First, you put dissected frogs in the jello salad at the parent-teacher banquet. Then you made it snow in the cafeteria. Then you read, sorry, then you rigged all the intercoms so they played Weird Al Yankovic songs full blast for six hours straight. For four long years, you two have been running amok in this school and I've never been able to prove anything until now. Mr. Krupp held the videotape in his hand. I took the liberty of installing tiny video surveillance cameras all around the school. I knew I'd catch you two in the act one day. I just didn't know it would be so easy. Chapter seven, a little blackmail. Friends, do you know what blackmail is? Um, blackmail is when someone offers to pay someone money to have them do something or say something or not do something or not say something. A little blackmail. Mr. Krupp sat up in his chair and chuckled to himself for a long, long time. <laughs> Finally, George got up the courage to speak. What, what, what are you gonna do with that tape? He said. I thought you'd never ask, laughed Principal Krupp. <laughs> I've thought long and hard about what to do with this tape, Mr. Krupp said. At first, I thought I'd send copies to your parents. The boys swallowed hard and sank deeply into their chairs. Then I thought I might send a copy to the school board, Mr. Krupp continued. I could get you both expelled for this. Expelled is kicked out of the school. The boys swallowed harder and sank deeper into their chairs. Finally, I came to a decision, Mr. Krupp concluded. I think the football team would be very curious to find out just who was responsible for yesterday's fiasco. I think I'll send a copy to them. George and Harold leaped out of their chairs and they fell to their knees. No, cried George, you can't do that. They'll kill us. Yeah, begged Har Harold. They'll kill us every day for the rest of our lives. Mr. Krupp laughed and laughed. <laughs> Please have mercy, the boys cried. We'll do anything. Anything? asked Principal Krupp with delight. He reached into his desk. desk. He pulled out a list of demands and he tossed it at the boys. If you don't want to be dead as long as you live, you'll follow these rules exactly. Oh, and there's the, there's the kneel here sign. And there they are kneeling, begging for forgiveness. George and Harold carefully looked over the list. This, this is blackmail, said George. 
Call it what you like, Principal Krupp snapped, but if you two don't follow the lists exactly, then this tape becomes the property of the Horwitz knuckleheads, which is the football team. So in this case, the blackmail is follow these rules and I won't give the tape over. Um, and here are the rules. Number one, no more practical jokes or pranks. Number two, no laughing or, sli or smiling. <laughs> Number three, um, it's cut off, no more something with a T. Number four, no more Captain Underpants. Number five, wash my car every day. <laughs> Number six says mow my, I guess mow my lawn. All right, friends, we're gonna stop there. Um, the next chapter is called Crime and Punishment. And I'll give you a little preview of the picture there. I guess they're getting to washing his car every day so the football team doesn't find out what they did. You can imagine the, the, the football players would be very upset because they ended up having to forfeit the game and it was such a fiasco, such a horrible day between the pepper for the cheerleaders and the soap and the instruments and all that. So I'm sure no member of the football team is going to be happy with the prank that they pulled. All right, so we'll get to chapter eight, crime and punishment next time. Bye, friends.